Many of the design patterns in the Gang of Four Design Patterns book are based on the principle favor composition over inheritance. But what does that mean? Let's find out. If you're new here, you want to become a better software developer, gain a deeper understanding of programming in general, start now with subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. If you want to separate responsibilities, create code with higher cohesion, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way to do it is inheritance. So instead of putting everything in one single big class, you would create a class hierarchy of classes and subclasses, where you would put certain things in a subclass so that it would be separated from the main class. Another thing you can do is composition. That means that you're basically using separate classes to represent separate things in your application. And then each of these classes use each other in some meaningful way. It's basically the difference between the is a relationship, which is inheritance, and the has a relationship, which is composition. Even though both inheritance and composition allow you to separate responsibilities, you have to really watch out with inheritance because that actually introduces the strongest possible coupling in object-oriented programming. And I'm gonna show you why in an example. So this example is a very advanced employee management system. We have an hourly employee, who's paid based on the number of worked hours. We have a salaried employee that gets a fixed monthly salary. And we have a freelancer. Now, freelancer is not actually an employee, but if we consider employee as a person that gets paid by a company for work performed, then it kind of fits under that same umbrella. In the hourly employee, we have some personnel data, like the name and some ID. We have a part that's about commission. So if an employee lands a number of contracts, the employee gets a commission. We have pay rate, number of hours worked, and there is a kind of fixed employer cost. And then we have a compute pay method that actually computes how much the employee should be paid based on these values here. So to compute this is relatively straightforward. We multiply the pay rate with the number of hours that the employee worked. We add the fixed employer cost and we add the commission for each contract that the employee landed. Salary the employee is quite similar. It also has a name ID. It also has a commission structure, but there's a monthly salary and a percentage of time that the employee works. And then this is the compute pay method. And then finally we have freelancer, also name and ID, commission, pay rate, hours worked, and then we have an additional VAT number for taxes. And then we have a main function where we create a couple of these employees, print out some information. And this is what happens when I run this example. So both of these employees earn $6,000. Now let's analyze this code a bit. There's two main problems. The first problem is that there's a lot of code duplication. I mean, hourly employee has commissions, contract landed, so has salaried employee, freelancer has this as well. There's a lot of duplication in the way that the pay is computed. So there's probably a better way to structure this than having these three separate classes that have a lot of the same code. Another issue is that each of these classes have a lot of responsibilities. For example, here, this one is responsible for storing personnel data. It's responsible for dealing with commissions and it's responsible for the pay rate and the hours worked and how to compute the pay based on that. And the same goes for the salaried employee and for the freelancer as well. So two problems that we'd like to solve. And you can use inheritance to do it by basically creating a hierarchy of classes and subclasses. Or you could also use composition. And that's basically separating out the different aspects of what a class consists of and then combining them later on. I'm going to show you both of these techniques and I'll also show you what the difference is in terms of coupling and how that plays along with the principle of favor composition over inheritance. So let's first look at the inheritance case. So what we're going to do here is basically create a super class for each of these employee types that store some generic data that's useful for every employee. And let's call that class employee. And I'm going to turn that into an abstract base class. And let's also use data classes here. So we have a data class employee that is going to contain the name and the ID of the particular employee. So I'm just going to copy this over here. And this is going to have an abstract method compute pay. And let's add some doc strings while we're at it. Now we have this basic employee class and then obviously 
hourly employee and salary employee and freelancer are going to inherit from that. And then in hourly employee, we don't need this part anymore. And same for salaried employee and for the freelancer. There we go. Let's verify that this still works correctly. And it does. So now what we've done, we've used inheritance to separate out a bit of information about employees and separated that from the rest. So for this, inheritance works fine. But the problem is, each of these classes still have too many responsibilities. For example, there is both commission information here and pay information, so it would be nice to also separate that out. If you want to use inheritance, what you need to do is create subclasses for each of these employee types to have a version with commission and a version without commission. So for example, what you could do is create a class salaried employee with commission that is a subclass of salaried employee. So let's do that. I'm just gonna copy this entire class and then I'll remove what I don't need. So we have the salaried employee with commission and that's a subclass of salaried employee. That's an employee paid based on a fixed monthly salary and that gets a commission. So now I can remove the commission part from the original salary employee. There we go. And then what I do in the salary employee with commission that I just put in the commission stuff, I remove this because that's handled by the salaried employee and in compute pay, I return calling the compute pay method on the super class and then adding the commission. And now what I need to do here in this uh, main function is to make sure that Sarah, because Sarah is actually an employee with commission, is now no longer a salaried employee, but is a salaried employee with commission. There we go. And let's run this code again. We're going to get the same result. But now you see we used inheritance to separate these different responsibilities a bit more. If you want to do this for other employee types, because obviously the freelancer also has that same commission structure and the uh, hourly employee also has the same commission structure, I would have to create a hourly employee with commission. That's an hourly employee subclass and a freelancer with commission. That's a freelancer subclass. So I'll, I'll do it one more time for the freelancer just to show you what, what is going to happen. So now we have a freelancer with commission and that's basically a subclass of freelancer and that gets a commission. This stuff I'm gonna remove and just like in the salary employee with commission, I'm using the super class compute pay method here. Uh, so that's basically this. Remove that extra plus. And that's basically what we need to do. And now I can remove the commission stuff again from this part and remove it here as well. So now I've basically done the same thing, but for the freelancer. You already see where this is leading to issues. Because one thing, we didn't really solve the code duplication this way because if you look at freelancer with commission so that's what this looks like and you look at salary employee with commission these classes are more or less the same basically the only difference is that they're a subclass of another class this one is a subclass of salary employee this one is a subclass of freelancer so code duplication we didn't really solve another issue by doing this with inheritance is that basically for every variation that we're going to add, we're going to get this explosion of subclasses. For example, suppose you also want to have a yearly bonus that's included with the pay. Then you would get lots and lots of subclasses like a freelancer with commission without bonus, a salaried employee without commission with bonus, etc, etc. So in the end, that kind of approach doesn't really work. And that's also the crux of what it means when we say favor composition over inheritance. If you use inheritance too much to separate the responsibilities in this way, it means you're gonna end up with this huge hierarchy of subclasses and it's gonna be really difficult to deal with. Also because inheritance actually introduces a lot of coupling. Because for example here, the freelancer with commission uses again the compute pay from the super method. So it assumes 
things about what compute pay does in the superclass. So that's what happens when you do this with inheritance. Now let's look at another option, which is composition. And with composition, we're not creating hierarchies of classes. We're trying to separate out the concepts and then combine them in meaningful ways. In this case, we have a few different concepts. We have the employee with the employee data. We have the employee payment structure, which is either hourly or salaried or on a freelancer basis. And we have the commission, which is based on the number of contracts that an employee has landed. So what you can do instead of using inheritance to combine all these things, you could also create separate class hierarchies for each of these three different things and then combine them later on. What you could do in this example is create a commission class and a contract class and then combine them with the employee class later on. So I'm going to leave this generic employee class here, but I'm going to add these contracts and commission classes, and then you'll see how that works together. So first thing I'm going to do is create a commission class. And then I'm just gonna copy over this part because it's gonna be very similar to this, but a bit different. So we're gonna have a class commission, and that stands on its own. And that class is going to have a commission amount and the number of contracts landed. And it's also going to have a, let's call this get payment method that computes the commission to be paid out. There we go. And this we can remove because we don't need that any longer. So that's the commission class, really basic. Now let's also add a contract class. For the contract, I'm going to use an abstract base class because then we can make subclasses like hourly contract, salaried contract, freelancer contract. And the only thing that the contract class is going to have is a get payment method. So let me just copy that over from this class. That's an abstract method. And let's add docstring. There we go. So now we have both a commission, we have a contract class, and we have the employee class. And now this is where composition gets into play. Because what we can do now is basically assign these contracts and commissions to an employee. So an employee is not only going to have a name and an ID, but it's also going to have a contract and an employee is also going to have a commission now because not every employee is going to have a commission we're going to turn this into an optional type so i need to import that from the typing package and default that's none and now employee actually doesn't need to be an abstract base class anymore. It can be just a regular class because that's where we're going to combine everything uh, into one. And then the compute pay method, we simply use the methods from the contract and from the commission to compute what the pay should be. So first we're going to compute the regular payout from contract. And then if there is a commission, we're going to add that to the payout. And then as a last line, we're going to re return the payout. So what we've done now is define a relationship here between the employee, the contract and the commission. That's basically what's happening here. And then we deal with how that interacts with each other in the compute pay method. And now what we can do is create specific contracts. So I could create an hourly contract. So I'm just gonna use the hourly employee class for that and change it a bit. So the hourly contract, that's going to be a subclass of contract, obviously. And then that's a contract type for an employee that's paid based on the number of worked hours. And that contract type, what's, what does it have? Well, it has the pay rate and the hours worked and the fixed employer cost. And let me just replace this method with the get payment method. There we go. And then the only thing that this get payment method does is return the pay rate times the hours work plus the employer cost and the commission is handled somewhere else. 
uh, this can actually be removed because that's already defined in the super class. So now we have an hourly contract and I can make a salaried contract as well. And that basically looks like this. And then finally, let's also create a freelancer contract just for completeness. I should have copied that from the hourly contract. There we go, and there should be a fat number. So that should be it. I can remove all these complicated with commission classes because we don't need them anymore. Let's just remove everything here. Now there's a couple of things we need to change in the main function because now we obviously change the whole structure of the application. So we have commissions, contracts and employees. And in the main function, we need to basically construct these things. So for the first employee, let's create a contract. And that's an hourly contract with a pay rate of 50 and 100 hours worked. And then Henry becomes a regular employee with a name and an ID and with a contract. For the second employee, we're gonna do something similar. So there is a Sarah contract and that's a salaried contract with a monthly salary of $5,000. And then Sarah is just like Henry, a regular employee instance, and we provide it with the contract. Second thing that we add to Sarah is the commission. So let's create a commission object with 10 contracts landed and also pass it to the constructor. There we go. Now we only need to change a few things in the information that we print because the hours worked is actually part of the contract. There we go. And the contracts landed is actually part of the commission. And there's one thing I forgot to do, which is in the employee class, remove this abstract method because compute pay is no longer abstract, obviously. So let's save this and now, yeah, that's fixed. And let me run this example one more time and check that it actually still works. And it does. So what are the advantage of using composition in this way versus inheritance? Well, one thing is that we've avoided a lot of the code duplication that we had with inheritance. Because basically everything that's related to commission is now in a commission class and everything related to contract is now in a hierarchy of contract classes. In the employee class, we're combining everything. So we have the personnel data, we have the contract and we have an optional commission. And that means when we create the employees, we have a lot of flexibility in determining what kind of employees they are. I could create a employee with an hourly contract with a commission or a salaried contract uh, without a commission or the other way around. So there's a lot of options here and we don't have that combinatorial explosion of classes and subclasses anymore that we had with the inheritance case. Another thing that's nice is that this is actually pretty easy to extend with other types of contracts or other types of commissions. At the moment, there is still a single commission class, but we could make this a little bit more generic by adding an actual abstract commission class. Let's, let's do that quickly. So let's call this a contract commission and then let's create an abstract class called commission. And the only thing that class has is a abstract method called get payment. And then basically I'm gonna copy over the doc string here. There we go. And contract commission is then going to be a commission subclass. And then what we can do in the main method is actually say that Sarah gets a contract commission that gets a number of contracts that she landed. And when we run this, we're going to get exactly the same result, obviously, but we made this a little bit more generic because now employee has a contract, which is an abstract class, and it has a commission, which is also an abstract class. So we can now make all kinds of different subclasses of contracts and 
commissions and combine them in any way that we like. And that's the power of composition, to be able to do that. There's few limitations to the example that I just showed. One thing is that the employee class still has a lot of responsibilities. It has both personnel information, it has a contract and a commission. We kind of separate those out, but it does bring all of these things together. So it might make sense to actually separate this out as well into a person data or employee personnel data class that basically represents that part of the employee. And that would also allow you to create other kinds of subclasses, like if you have specific types of information that you would store for different kinds of employees, then you would also be able to do that. Second thing is that I use data classes here all over the place. I mean, I do like data classes. I think they're really simple and they allow us to easily create classes containing data such as uh, a specific commission type or a specific employee type, basically like I did here. You don't have to use data class here. You could also do it with regular classes. Then you have to add initializer methods. So I think this is a bit simpler. But there are also other options. If you're not too fixated on using built-in stuff only, you could also use a library like Pydantic, which gives you a lot of extra options with regards to data classes. For example, you can imagine that employee data is something that you read from a file. And Pydantic offers validation and sanitation options, so you get a bit more control over what happens with that data. In my own experience, I use inheritance almost exclusively with abstract base classes. So it's mainly a mechanism to help me separate out different parts of the application and then patch them up at the end. If you look at most of the design patterns in a Gang of Four book, they actually work in the same way. It's rarely a design pattern which has more than a single layer of inheritance. The decorator is an example of a design pattern that has two layers because it actually has a recursive component in the definition of the pattern. But most of the other patterns are really just a single layer of inheritance. So overall, use abstract base classes to define the interfaces and then define subclasses for the specific versions of that and patch them up at the end. Another way to look at it is in terms of coupling. So what you do with an abstract base class is that you're reducing coupling between various parts of your application because you're allowing one class to depend on the interface instead of a direct instance. And that's why abstract base classes help you reduce coupling in your application. Inheritance in general, if you're not using abstract base classes, is actually a mechanism that adds coupling because every time you create a subclass, that subclass is directly dependent on the superclass. So if your aim is to reduce coupling in your application, then realize that inheritance actually takes you in the other direction, whereas abstract base classes do help with reducing coupling. And that's why composition is such a great mechanism for writing nice decoupled code. What I also used in this example but didn't really talk about is dependency injection and dependency inversion. I did a separate video about that. There's a link in the top. I hope you enjoyed this example and that you thought it was useful. I put the code that I worked on in the Git repository. You can find it in the description. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next video.